Hello everyone, and right now it's time for Reventure. Reventure is a game that is sort of similar to Zelda 2. At least it tries to make you think that it's similar to Zelda 2. Its music is kind of close. So, what is Reventure? Well, it's a lot of things, and that's why I couldn't make a standard game analysis video on it. It is a 2D platformer, it is one of those. We jump. And one of the most basic mechanics in this platformer is that the more gear we carry, the less high we can jump. So, for example, when we take this shield, we're a little heavier, and we can't jump quite as high as before. Now, obviously, the more items we carry, the harder it is to go along certain pathways, to the point that some pathways become inaccessible entirely if we're carrying too many items. And this ties into Reventure's excessive non-linearity. Adventure, sorry, Reventure is a poster child for non-linearity. Almost every path leads to some other path somewhere, and almost everything in this world is connected, either through secret passages or more obvious ones. And I won't lie, it is very impressive that they created a game world like this, where nearly every path leads to another path and you can reach anywhere from almost anywhere. So, we have the shield, which makes us invincible because any enemy we touch will just bounce off us, and we have the sword, which is completely unnecessary to rescue the princess, which the game would have you believe is the main goal. So, if we actually do want to try and rescue the princess, we have a few platforming puzzles to solve. As was already mentioned, Reventure is aggressively non-linear. I'm taking what I believe to be the most straightforward path to rescuing the princess, but there are over a dozen other ways to do it. You can go down this well right here, you can climb above the map and climb up the mountain and go through the mountain. You can head behind the starting area, find a hidden panel in the shopkeeper's house, and fire a cannon to the princess for fast travel purposes. And when you're actually in the mountain, or at the Dark Fortress, there are still more pathways to choose to actually get to the princess herself. And each of these pathways comes with their own puzzle, because the environment itself is a puzzle. And I really enjoyed trying to find a way to get to the princess, because even though there are so many ways to get to her, it's not easy. And that's because the main gimmick of Reventure, or I shouldn't say a gimmick because its entire design is based around it, the idea behind Reventure is that there are 100 endings, and all of them are bad ends, except for one. And many of the bad ends result in you dying, but many of them result in you killing other people, or just murder happening in general, or some kind of horrible misfortune. They're not all death, many of them are just death-related. This is a sad game with a lot of dark humor in it. The trailer is actually very misleading, and I'm not sure if that's intentional. The trailer has very triumphant, hopeful anime intro music to it, and it makes it seem like it's an emotional adventure, adventure of sorts, but really, this is one of the bleakest, most violent, dark comedies to happen in quite some time, especially in video games. It's bloody and cruel, and virtually every single character in the game is an asshole. Well, even... Asshole seems a little nice, just let me put it that way. For an example of some of the bad endings that sort of champion this dark humor, if you sacrifice the princess to an altar, then the gods give the kingdom rain and everyone prospers. If Tim stays in bed, then all diseases are cured and no one is hurt ever again. Because Tim is just a huge incompetent asshole, and so is the princess and everyone for that matter. There's a lot of darkness, death, betrayal, and sadness. There's only one good outcome, and even that good outcome is done with snark. To top it all off, no matter what bad ending you get, the game finds a creative way to reset the princess and Tim's location while still changing the world and its environment to, to uh, match what happened in the previous ending. For example, there's a hole in the floor of the palace, and if you blow up the hole in the floor, the game interprets that as some kind of terrorist act, and it paints it as a good thing that Tim blew up the palace, because the palace never did any of its government duties, never took care of the poor, never did any of its public service for the people. But then, immediately after that ending, 
they implement a kind of democracy where everyone just votes for whoever they think is the best and then the richest person wins the election and things go back to the way they were before democracy was instated. That's the kind of humor the game has. That is one of my more liked examples of it, but still. And after you get that ending, and it seems nothing of consequence has changed, it turns out you're wrong, because now there's a giant hole in the palace floor that you can go through, which acts as a shortcut. So many of the endings are like this, where they find some narrative reason to reset the position of the key characters, but change things in the environment to give you a new shortcut or new endings to find. And I won't lie, Revenger must have taken an immense amount of creative effort, both to design the game world and create endings which flow in that way, all of which you can get in any order and still have them make exactly as much sense. That's nuts to create something with that much artistic ambition, and I would consider Revenger a masterpiece regardless of whether its humor is exactly for me. There is nothing else quite like Reventure. It's a collectathon, it's a narrative driven walking simulator, it's a 2D platformer. And regardless of its morbid humor, it hosts one of the most consistent universes in gaming visually, especially with its retro aesthetic, if you want to call this retro. But yeah, there are so many creative things about Reventure that I couldn't possibly mention. I'd end up forgetting something. There's the way it uses oversaturated colors and excessive lighting to convey atmosphere. There's the way that some bad endings change your character sprite or your name. But I think I've done what I can without spoiling too much. There's certainly nothing else like Reventure out there.